Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a nice set of onboarding screens for a web application. Onboarding screens are important because they're a great way to help users get set to achieve the goal that they initially decided to use your product for. So as you can see, it's looking clean and minimal, so let's get started. I'm going to start with a HD artboard here today and give the background a light grey. The first screen that we're going to make will just be a simple login screen. So I'm going to make a box 530 pixels by 530 pixels and place it in the middle. I just bring in here a logo I have made earlier that appeared on my uh, Instagram channel. If you want to check that out, I'll put the link below. And the crux of this is going to essentially be a service that allows you to create Kanban boards, uh, an, an agile tool to sort of track what you have going on. So everything around this will be based on that. The first thing I'm going to do now is just create some fields on the sign in page for the user to input their email and password to log in. So I'm going to be using an icons today, which will come included in the icon font plugin. If you download it, I'll drop the link below. I'm just going to pop that 20 pixels out from the side and then bring in 16 size font Montserrat is what I'll be using throughout today and that's going to form the basis of our fields so I'm just going to now copy that over change the icon and the label to password so I won't bother showing you all of my repeats over and over so the next thing I'm going to do now is create two buttons underneath one for login and the other for essentially if the user doesn't have an account they need want to go and create an account so the first one I'm going to do is in the primary cyan color and I'm going to change the label font to white and we can keep that as is now I'm gonna I did half the size of the field so we have above but I'm going to take another 10 pixels off that so that we have a little gap between the two buttons like so so there's our, our form done now I'm noticing that they do appear a little bit too spaced out for my liking, so I might actually make this box a bit smaller. And I do like to also include uh, the sort of forgotten password field, but I'm just going to make it forgot something so that it applies to both fields to save us writing it out twice and give the user one point to go to. So I'm just going to pop that in the field group, and then when I center align that now, that will work. And I've just kind of made that box a little smaller, as I mentioned earlier, and that's our login page done. So I'm just going to clone that artboard and move that over. And we're going to work on our menu, first of all. So I'm going to bring in a rectangle for the white background, 180 pixels wide. And I'm going to give it a very faint border, like so. And now we're going to bring in that logo that we had in the login screen which will just be the, the company's logo. With, again, a fictional product here. Then I'm going to copy and paste that box and I'm going to divide the height by 10. And that's going to go along the top as well. So I am just going to change the borders to be outside so that we don't see them at the top and bottom of the windows. The artboard, I should say. And then align that logo with the middle of the box to the right that runs along the top of the artboard. Now again, I'm going to copy and paste that box that we have there to keep 100 line height. And this is going to be the bounding box for each of our menu items. So the first icon I'm going to bring in is a home icon. I'm going to change the height from 100 to 70, and I'm going to increase the size of the icon and pad it about 15 pixels out from the side. Now I'm going to bring in a label, just home, with a standard paragraph size. 16, align the two of them and put the 10 pixels out. And I might even actually 20 pixels out from the side and group that, copy and paste it a few times over. So now you notice we're onto the onboarding uh, screen, which will only appear for the first time a user logs in. But what I'm going to do is give it a light gray background and also put a rectangle in there with the primary cyan so that you can see that it looks highlighted to a user they know what page they're on. So that's our left-hand menu done. 
Now I'm going to bring in the sort of page title. And that's just going to match the item in the left hand nav. So I'm going to call that onboarding. The only other thing I want to put in is a, the user's photo so that when they click that, they'll be able to access their account settings. Just going to use the craft plugin here that'll give me quick access to unsplash photos. So that's placed a random photo in there and that will do. And then I'm going to group everything in that header. And I'm just going to group everything in this left hand nav and change the opacity to 50 for the non-active items. So now I'm going to use rulers here to just pad out 30 pixels from both sides of the menu, like so. Then bring that box in there and then double click on it in order to expand it. I'm going to expand it from where I placed it all the way over to the edge. So that'll give us the bounds of where a card can appear in the interface. We won't let it get any closer than that. We don't need that logo, so I'm going to delete it and just move everything out of that group just to make it a bit easier for us as we go. And as I was mentioning earlier, I'm just going to clean up my layers by putting every, everything in that menu into one group. So I'm just going to give this card a title and that's just going to be welcome first of all. I'm going to put it 30 pixels from the left hand side and 30 pixels from the top and copy and paste it again. Just change the font down to 16 and give it a bit more of a gray touch. And I'm just going to make up some text to go in here. You can do whatever you like. I won't bother showing you what I've written in real time there and space the 10 pixels out. So it looks pretty clean for the top left hand side. I'm just going to put that in a group and move these buttons also 30 pixels out from the bottom and the right. What I will do is just make the height an even number, 580 pixels. We had it on a three before, which isn't ideal when we're trying to measure out where things should be placed. Now with these buttons, the second button, I'm gonna change the background to white and actually just change the font color to a light gray because this is gonna be our skip. And we don't really want it to be highlighted too much to a user because we don't want them to, to be skipping. We want them to be filling this out. So now, what I'm going to do is take the field that we had for email, change its width, and then place the label in the middle of the box. And we're going to come up with a whole bunch of different use cases that could, uh, people could be using this software for. And all I'm going to do is copy it out over and over again. And on each row, I'm going to group it and just essentially nudge it 50 pixels to the right and 50 pixels to the left for the bottom. And then you'll get this nice little effect. And if you grab them all in one group and mask them on the background of the card, you'll now notice that the edges of the cards don't hang out anymore. So it gives it a nice effect. So I do want to add some pagination in. And the easy way of doing this is just to go to the uh, uh, mobile design UI kit that's included in Sketch. And I'm just going to line that up with the buttons along the bottom. I'm going to ungroup it from the symbol because I'm going to need to change the opacity of the various second and third circles later on. But that's our first card done. So I'm going to call that onboarding one. I'm going to clone it again, and I'm going to call this one onboarding one A. Now what I want to do in onboarding one A is give some of the fields uh, a purple border so that when we click on them, we can see the effect that would happen for users that are clicking on three or four different fields like so. So that's essentially onboarding 1A done there. I'm going to move on to the second set now. So again, I'm going to keep the same header on the card. I'm just going to change the text. Now I'm going to go back here for a second. I'm going to grab that field that we had. I'm going to pop that field in the middle because this one is going to be about inviting users. So I want to have a consistent field, a set of fields that I'm using throughout. So I'm just going to change the label to say enter an email to, to invite. I'm going to group that. I'm just going to change the opacity to 40 so it looks like placeholder text and copy it out a few times over. Now the bottom one will be an example of someone that's already been invited. So I'm going to change the icon to a tick with purple and then I'm just going to input an email address. So I'm just going to make up here John Citizen and I'm going to need to change the opacity of that back to 100. Pop all those fields in a group 
and then vertically align it. And that's all that we're gonna have in the second box. We do just need to remember to change the opacity of the pagination dots back to 100, and then for the first one, back to 32 as well, so we can see we're on the second page. So there's that onboarding screen 2A done. I need to change the labels, but what I've done without realizing is accidentally changed up my order. I've edited the second screen instead of the third, so be sure not to make that same mistake. All I need to do is change the order and change the labels. So that's not a drama. As for the, the text inside, I can change that later. So as I said, we were just working essentially on what was onboarding screen 2A because we uh, had an, e an email already inputted. So all I'm gonna do for onboarding screen two is delete that field and then add in another, another blank gray field like so. So there's onboarding screen two done. Now we're gonna move on to the third onboarding screen and this will be the final screen that we're asking for any sort of information from the user. So again, I'm just gonna change the information in the text fields. I'm gonna delete the existing two email fields I'm gonna keep this one because it will be useful. I'm just gonna take the mask and this field out of a group so that I can line them up a bit better, like so. And I'm gonna start working now. This first field is gonna be the name of the board. So I've got an icon down here that I've been using a few times over for a board. And I'm just gonna change the label to something along the lines of give your board a name. I wanna change this to gray, so I'm gonna change the whole group to a black color and then reduce the opacity to 40, which is just a nice simple way of achieving that gray. Now I'm gonna copy and paste that group and put it 40 pixels down. I'm gonna change the icon again. Now what I'm gonna go for here is three columns and each column is gonna be asking the user to input a status for that color, which is uh, how a board system such as Trello works. So I'm gonna change the icon to something cool, it almost looks like a Game Boy kind of. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the rectangle layer and I'm gonna copy it. So what you need to do is pop that rectangle layer under the existing rectangle layer and you'll get this effect where there's one rectangle box and then the other one goes underneath of it. Now I'm gonna change the radius only on the bottom two pieces of that top rectangle, which you can do by double clicking on the rectangle itself and copy and paste the text layer out put it 20 pixels from the top of the box and just change the labels to your task will appear here. So I'm gonna do this three times over. I'm gonna put it all into one group and then make it easy to copy and paste. But the thing is, it is a little wide at the moment, it's not gonna fit. So I'm just gonna grab the rectangles and change their widths down to 360. And now when I copy and paste it, it'll sit nicely like so. So that's perfect. Once you've done that, you can just make sure it's aligned properly in the middle of the artboard like so. You'll see that red line appear when it is. And once again, we're just gonna change the opacity of our pagination dots. Now all I'm gonna do for 3A, which is gonna be the version that's been filled in, is just add in some labels for each of these fields, but change the opacity to 100% so that you can see that they've been filled out. I'm gonna add in one final screen now quickly, which is gonna be the loading screen, just with an icon like so. I'll put the link in the description for you to find them. Now I'm gonna begin prototyping. So essentially all I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this area clickable so when I click on it, you'll get the effect that the boxes go purple. But I'm gonna actually change the color of that continue button to gray until we get to onboarding screen 1A. From on screen onboarding 1A, then that button will work. So I'm gonna do the same thing on every screen now for the first step until they've provided some information that continue button is gonna be grayed out and I'm just gonna simply, without any animation type other than the instant one, gonna link each screen together. So you'll see that each button, as I mentioned, starts off gray, and when you click the content area in the screen, it'll take you to the next one, and then that button will be green, and then it will work. So that now when we preview, we press login, we press on the content area, now the button will turn green and you will have now ended up with a nice set of onboarding screens. So if you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. And once again, thanks for watching.